If you'd like to see more how-to upholstery videos and learn more tips and tricks, click the subscribe button to keep up to date with our latest videos. Click the notification bell to be notified when we upload new videos. If you like this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up so we can make more content that you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, Neil here, Facelift Interiors. In today's video, we're going to show you how to do deep buttoning on a small headboard or tufting. It's for a client of ours, Charles Bed, and they wanted to change the style of it. So we're going to take it from just this old wooden headboard to this style. Deep buttoned in a lovely Warwick fabric, blush pink, really nice, really trendy colour. It's no sewing as well. I'm going to show you step by step how to do it, how to glue your foam on, how to cut away your foam, how to mark your diamonds, how to drill your diamonds, and how to cut your fabric, how to measure your fabric, how to mark your fabric because we mark the diamonds. And then you have to make an allowance for the diamonds to pull down into the holes. Now, if you want to see how to deep button a headboard, keep on watching. What I'm doing now is measuring the headboard to know the size I'm going to cut the foam. Heavy duty adhesive. Two inch white foam, soft for headboard. Don't want to use a firm foam. Glue the wood and the foam so you get good strong stick. Press down so it's all stuck. Now you want to start cutting off the excess foam. There's a Bosch GSG 300 or 600, I'm not sure which one, but there's only one. So if you search it, you'll find it. Run the blade along the side of the wood so you get a nice clean cut. That is quite an expensive tool, so there is alternatives. You can use your mum's kitchen knife, electric kitchen knife, which would do the job. Just not as well, but it would still do the job, so bear that in mind. If you don't have a spare £600 to spend on a drill. This is a skewer. I'm going to use that to mark out the diamonds before I start doing it with a marker pen. Measure top to bottom to find the center. Measure side to side to find the center. Because it's only a small headboard, I'm only going to do one diamond. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring in so I don't finish too close to the end or too far from the end. So I'll work out the best way to do it and then I'll mark it with a marker pen and you'll see how it's going to finish. Mark your centre. Then mark your top diamond line and your bottom diamond line. If I'm right in thinking, I think these were 9 inches top to bottom by 6 inches side to side. So I'm just marking the diamonds now, mark them out with pen, so you can see how they're going to finish. So that's 9 inches top to bottom, 6 inches side to side. That is a 30mm circle drill bit. and you reverse. When you're drilling these holes out, you make sure you put the drill on reverse because otherwise it will chew up the foam. You'll understand when you see the drill bits, the ridges, the way they face. So always draw them out in reverse.
Now using a small drill bit, drill the holes for where the twine and the button is going to go through. I definitely missed a couple here because I remember when I done it, I had to drill some. Glue the Dacron on top, this gives you a nice soft feel. Cut rid of the excess. And then pop through the holes. Just use your finger to pop the holes through. So now I'm measuring how long the fabric's got to be, the cut. I'm pushing down with a loose tape measure into the hole. I can see how wide the fabric has to be, how deep the fabric has to be. So it basically worked out to be a full width of fabric. And watch this. marking the top of the fabric because it's a velvet I want the pile to run down right, so like on the headboard you mark your center then mark your diamond lines but with this you have to make an allowance so from what I can remember, the diamonds were nine inches top to bottom by six inches side to side. So on the back of the fabric, I'll mark the fabric ten and a quarter inches top to bottom and seven and a quarter inches side to side, which gives you an inch and a quarter allowance for the fabric to fall down into the holes. Right, so I'm just going to explain to you what I've done here. So I've drawn out the diamonds. I'm just going to draw a rough one here. The original diamonds on the frame are 9 inches top to bottom by 6 inches side to side. So from that point there to that point there is 9 inches and that point to that point there is 6 inches. So here 10 and a quarter by 7 and a quarter. So let's just draw another one. from that to that to allow for the buttons to push down so what I'm doing here is I'm laying out the fabric and getting my buttons ready I've already made my buttons with my button machine I'll show you that one day on another video I'll start using a buttoning needle on the middle diamond on the top diamond so I'll come through on the mark push the twine through on the needle and then pull it through on the bottom now staple it off. Later on I'll show you how to staple. And down to the next mark, through with the needle, thread the button, and pull through. Trying to keep the pleat nice and straight. and then work out from the center. As I start to finish the first diamond, then I start to dress the pleats. See there, I'm stapling. I'll do a close up later. And then I'm stapling again at a different angle so the staples can't come loose.
some people like to do it a separate way. Some people like to do all their buttons and then tidy up afterwards. I like to tidy up after each diamond. Try and keep things tidy as I go. But it totally depends how you like to do things. It's totally up to you. What I'm doing here is I'm using a regulator tool. Which is like point one end and then a flat end on the other end. And we use it to push the fabric in. Sort of flatten out the fabric and get a nice finish. You can find it on any sort of upholstery suppliers or eBay, somewhere like that. I'm going to do a close up on this one. So, this is thread through the button. So going straight through the mark that I made earlier with the needle. Thread the eye at the buttoning needle. And pull through on the other side. I'm turn it around so you can see. Pull through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to staple down to the strong bit of wood at the bottom. Stick a couple of staples in. And then I'll pull up the other way and stick a few more in. So if the button does pull, the staples won't come out. So now I'm using the regulator to tidy up all the pleats to make sure they all look perfect. Now I go around working around the top and the bottom, make sure the fabric pleats are all straight. I get a nice clean finish. It's definitely not a five minute job. I'm doing this working out the corners. I will have to put a pleat on the corners. As the shape of the headboard, it curves round. There is going to be excess fabric, so we'll have to put a pleat in. Same on the bottom. Working the fabric over. Nice straight lines. Really important to get straight lines.
making cuts in fabric to get around the frame. I've got to put a pleat down here as well because there's excess fabric and just the way the frame is made. Now we cut away our excess fabric. And cut off the excess button in twine as well. Now this bit is optional. You don't have to do this. I'm using the pipe in and I had some extra fabric so I'm putting it on the back. But you could put a line in on the back because it's up against the wall. Totally depends on where the bed is going to be situated in the room, if it's in the middle or if it's up against the wall, you can put anything on the back really, put a bit of line in because you're not going to see it. What I'm doing there with the piping is I'm cutting little little strips into the piping so it gives you a nice curve. Then what I'm doing, I'm cutting into the piping, cutting away the excess there that I don't need and I'm folding it back on itself, stapling it down. Now measuring down top to bottom and side to side, marking the center. Then I'm going to put my fabric on and then I've got to shape it because it's not square. So if you try and put a square bit of fabric on it won't sit properly. These are actually gardeners, it's actually a gardening tool that we use, I use personally for cutting this metal gripper because it ruins scissors this stuff. So I will do a video one day on how to use metal gripper because it is it's like an art in itself, it's hard to get used to. And then you push all the metal grip up so it's three quarters down. We've got a lining fabric, which is just going to be stapled off. This gives you a nice strong finish on the back. This is how you know when you're getting a good quality product. Cut all the way out of the excess. Then we glue down some Dacron. And make sure you cut the Dacron just a bit over the metal gripper because the metal gripper is quite sharp, it will cut through the fabric so the Dacron sort of helps it cushion. What I do is I like to do the middle and then the ends and then sort of work the fabric in using my regulator again. and pushing the gripper down. Push the fabric in. And this video is making it look a lot easier than what it actually is. Then use a hammer to knock down the metal gripper. I will do a video on this later on. This metal gripper can be very frustrating and it's very sharp as well, so it can cut. So be careful if you're gonna use it. On the bottom, I'm just stapling on the back because you're not going to see it and I'd rather staple on the back. There's no hands going to go there. So now the perfectionist in me is just putting some black lining on just because I hate the colour of these legs. So I'm just using some cardboard strip to get a nice finish. So now I'm just putting some black lining on these legs. You 
folding it over on the back, getting a nice tight finish on the back, stapling down. Then I'm hammering the feet back on. And this is the finished product. Really happy how it turned out. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.